Hey guys, uh, this is uh, Black Woman 7 and today I'll be going over our EPL Season 4 quarterfinals matchup as we're up against uh, Sky, so I'm just going to get right into it because uh, um, I'm just going to have to like, I, I want to explain to both, both me and my opponent's teams pretty quick and then we'll just get to the what happened in the game, so, so yeah, I may or may not know the results. So yeah, so um, so let's just get started. So um, so um, basically, I was gonna be like uh, facing off against a uh, sky in the quarterfinals. Well, this was technically the top seek scene, but like I actually had a buy, for, like since like all the top teams and well. Well, only one person in each division, or since there's only two, like only two people like got, uh, like buys, and I got one of them. So we were, we just had a week off, I guess, and I just kind of spent the whole week trying to prep around uh, Sky and uh, Cody, but obviously we're facing Sky. So yeah, we'll just get right into the matchup. Um, I already have a list of Pokemon you see on like Showdown and on the table there so um the big pokemon threats i have noted are victini zygarde bulu manetric and of course the uh blastoise and registeel uh, there's also some pokemon that cut off like reggie ice and the like, grimpardos you know um since this is very long this is like i don't i just want i just lined them up all like Pretty quickly, so so right off the bat, um, Sky's team is pretty interesting. Um, he has a Victini Zygarde core, and but, oh yeah, um, just for you guys, this is like just important information. Of course, this is a uh, Nat Dex with uh, cut move, so hidden power, ice, and pursuit is allowed. So that's something I have to take into consideration with team building, especially in this game, because like. There's like mods like Muck, obviously Manetric with Empire Eyes, uh, Zygarde, as I'll explain, and maybe like uh, some of these other guys, and they want to run like a hidden power for a specific bat. Well, except for you, Rigid Ice, you, you're really, literally an ice. A block of ice. Literally, the score would not want to touch this thing at all, so. <laughs> so. Of course, the media threat list is like Manetric, Victini, Zygarde, because you know, Victini and like, uh, Manetric can like both turn with each other. Like, Zygarde and Bulu is a very strong, def like, offensive and defensive core, especially with like grassy terrain leftovers. And like, Bulu just supplementing that, so. Um, one thing I will say is that, um, like, Bulu is kind of a. Th it, it is not a as threatening as I thought it'd be like you know like going into like the battle but it can be like really annoying if it has like certain ideas ideal sets that I could think of like say like a taunt nasty like a taunt like stallbreaker set with taunt toxic nature's madness and whatever and one thing I did notice about this team um uh, when building versus sky is uh he did have like he does have like only like one or two rockers. I think Reg or Registeel and Rampartos are like his only rockers. And then like for removal he only has uh um what is it? Blastoise really like with rapid spin and I'm like holy shit. I could just bike hazard him down and maybe try to win that way. Yeah, I know that may or may not be scummy, but I mean that's Probably with the logical choice what I went with, so like even then I just didn't want to like uh like I didn't want to like like let the opportunity like waste itself from there, so I'm just hazarding it him, so um I'm not gonna like oh do an overview of each of his mods. Like we all know Victini can be great, has strong coverage. Blastoise very good defensive threat. I don't think he'll be shell smashed this week because like he really needs to like rapid spin because otherwise like this could be really bad. Muck 
is probably the most annoying defensive threat because it could at least pursue trap me with Mew. And Mian Xiao depends on the set, but I'm expecting regen for the whole spikes thing. Registeel may or may not be a threat, I don't know. Uh, Kang is a wish passer, but it's Kang. Uh, not Mega Kangaskhan. Minitrick will turn, but you know, because we get spikes up, that could be huge because Minitrick cannot carry boots. And uh, Bulu has. Well, we could figure out a way to deal with Bulu. And Zygarde, I'd say, is probably the bigger, like, the biggest just the threat of them all because, as you see, like, I, for this week, I'm not bringing a fairy type. And there's kind of a reasoning to this, since I do have a bug wall of my own, so. <laughs> so yeah, this is basically my team. So, um, for this uh, week, we have uh, Aerodactyl, which is surprisingly non-stab. Yeah, I guess this goes to show how terrible Aerodactyl is, but I don't know. Well, one thing I did notice is that his entire team is very weak to normal plus ground coverage. And Arrow just happens to have like a... I, okay, I know it says pressure, but this is basically Tough Claws boosted, so... <laughs> so, yeah, so I have a Tough Claws boosted double edge. Locked and ready to go versus like his entire team, and it hits everything pretty hard, even Zygarde. Um, I did consider like Ice Bang, but I was like... No, nah, this is Sky we're facing, so I might get like hacks there. <laughs> so I just decided to go with Double Edge. Earthquake's mainly there for the Registeel and maybe like the Victini. Because mostly I'm going to be spamming Double Edge for the vast majority of this game when Arrow's out. I did put Rocks here because I kind of had a trouble fitting Rocks with this team between Arrow and Gliscor. And Gliscor's moveset was like far more contentious and impactful in my opinion whereas arrow like if I, I had an extra slot so yeah and i i just don't think i'll need i'll, I'll miss uh having like a flying coverage or like stone or a rock coverage like come on like i did have roost at least in case i have to like you know roost all against the uh victini against the double victory it's if it locks itself into that so um and yeah I'm really, that's pretty much it I did build the team around Arrow, so as you'll see. And our next Pokemon is uh, Weekend, which is basically our pretty much a classic set that I love running back in Gen 6. It's just Combine, Roar, Rest, and Scald. And the idea of the set is pretty much to stop any of his setup, like to say uh, Shell Smash Blastoise, um, Work Up Bikini, uh, Curse Setup, Registeel. And even Psychard with like coil sets. So yeah. Um Shaw is just pretty spammable versus his entire team, I'm not gonna lie. Like almost everything doesn't want to take a skull from like uh from the uh you know Suicune. And I just had a very good matchup for the this week, so I did have rest here because uh, normally I do carry like, um, you know, solve plus protect. But I felt this week, you like, uh, sweet is gonna be more vital as a wall. As you'll see, like, uh, I I have a way to implement this, and that is with the uh, heal bell on the Mew. Now, of course, heal bell Mew is pretty weird when you have a glitch score, but looking at his team. He has a lot of viable toxic, you know, toxic guys. I guess you could say that. Because almost any of these Pokemon can run toxic. And and as a surprise factor in of itself, even against Mew. I think I've, I've seen him run like toxic like on uh, Manetric and uh, of course Zygarde a couple times. And even Mianxiao, I think one. I don't know if I saw Mianxiao. It was like either Mianxiao or Victini, but... Either way, like, I wanted to ensure that, like, I want to guard against that. Also, if he toxics, uh, if any of his mons toxic Mew, that's not, like, a Registeel. I could at least, like, toxic him back. So, yeah, that's cool. Um, I do have spikes, again, because I wanted to apply a lot of offensive pressure, but, you know, switching. 
forcing him to switch a lot, so yeah. And uh, I do have to, I did have to run uh, like Estos this week because like Knockoff was like considerably weak, and he could just run like weakness policy on like Bettini, and I rather not fought that. And uh, one thing I did note about Seismic Toss, and I just learned about this a while back, was that it kind of tells you the exact HP value your opponent has. Well, unless they have a sub, but then again, if they have like, if they have a sub and it doesn't break, then it, you kind of know what HP investment they have, so yeah. And that's the point of it, like, um, pretty much the point of having S Toss is not only just to have like a way to hit his team for just good damage, but also like just to like figure out what his rolls are, what his sets are. Figure it out whether they're like if they have less HP, they're more likely to be like, you know, off you know, offensive sets. And if they're like, you know, more HP then it could be more bulkier. It could be substitute sets, like you know, Zygarde and whatnot. So it was just like a pretty good spammable move and it would spikes so up, I could Back up the pressure, and you could see where I'm going with this with Roar, Suicune, and uh, and and also Rocks with Arrow, and Double Edge Spam. That's pretty much the idea of this battle and matchup. Then we have Just Stand, not A Drive. The uh, Ente with a uh, Sacred Fire, Howl, uh, E Speed, and uh, Substitute. So, man, I I honestly forgot the EV spread, but for this, but. Obviously, this outspeeds uh, Bulu, and I think this stuff has something to do with like Bikini. I think it's like be able to take like. I think it had something to do with Bikini and Reggie Ice, but either way, um, the goal of this set is just to set up on like. I think it was like a Alolan Muck. Like if I ever burn a Alolan Muck, the idea was to set up on it with Sacred Fire, and Sub Howl. And then from there, I just like attempt to win with like Sacred Fire plus E Speed just to, you know, priority down everything. Or just break his team to the point where like, you know, when by break, I mean sweep his team to the point where like Arrow and like we can get win it by themselves. This is pretty much our third win con <laughs> for the week for this battle. And honestly, Sacred Fire is pretty strong versus him because like. Blastoise, if he's like, get chipped down. Um, Me and Shao doesn't want to switch in. Blitmok doesn't want to switch in. Red Steelizer, Kang. It can have a sod, but whatever. Manetra can intimidate me, but Sacred Fire is something you don't want to switch into. And Bulu, Zygarde, they don't want to switch into that. Like, you see, this is like, his entire team doesn't want to switch to any of this stuff. And Victini, unless it's like boots and some weird defensive set, I think we're fine. So that's like pretty much the idea of having this sub Ente. And Howl is pretty weird because it is from an it's a event move. But the idea is just to boost up as many times as possible. Maybe the plus two, ideally the plus two or three. To the point where we just kind of win the game. So yeah. The next Pokemon we have is probably the one I worked on the most. That is Buzzle. Uh, week with eight. Uh, shout outs to all the PFA guys. I guess you guys, this is a good nod to you. And honestly, I, there was like a lot of sets I went with this guy. Like, I even thought about Quick Attack, or not Quick Attack, but uh, uh, Quick, Quick Claw Buzzwool for a time. Um, but I ultimately settled with this option, which is weird. Like, this was like a mono bug attacking, like, Buzzwool with metronome and it's kind of weird at first because you're like uh don't you want to have like um brain punch Eve or black and i'm like yeah but don't you want to have recovery a substitute defense boost and the option to drop their attack yeah you go where i'm going with this like the idea of this Buzzwool is basically to like break his team. Like once all the slower threats like Victini and uh like what else? Victini, Manetric, and any other hidden power flying users are gone. You just send this guy in. Like set up a, a bulk up a, like and not just start lunging shit, really. 
And then just should get defense raises from there. And then like attempt to win the game. Um lunch is pretty much like no one's I I, I haven't this is like the first time I'm using lunch myself. But with this matchup it made a lot of sense. Because like not only do I just like do like massive damage to his uh to let's say uh uh well look at his team like like he like his entire team is like somewhat neutrally it, like I can hit him his entire team like neutrally with bug. That's how that's how effective this set is in terms of like, except for maybe Registeel and that's where the metronome comes in. And the idea is just to you know like get metronome boost on top of like the bulk ups and the lunge raises as well. So of course I can't drop Registeel's like you know attack, but it's you know most likely gonna be clear body, but. And also Reggie Ice, but then again Reggie Ice is the Reggie Ice and this is a Buzzwolf, so yeah. <laughs> um the idea was just to like set up and just pretty much counter sweep him against any physical attackers. Which honestly I could I honestly the he his I mean special attackers are like maybe like Blastoise with Shell Smash, Teeny, if it's like special with Teeny, Manetric, and like Reggie Ice. Everything else is just like a physical attack or a wall that just uses S toss or something like that, so So yeah. Um So this is plus wolf set like like I said I do I was like working on it for like a for like a long time and I ultimately decided on this guy, so I would say it's like it's also like designed to take on like a uh, Zygarde, though I'll admit. Voice band Zygarde is something I was like pretty scared of, and I ultimately went with Lunge. To kind of like, and also, also Coil. So I ultimately went with Lunge to like counter, to stop his like you know Coil setup as well, and it could help me like you know eventually go into like Sweep into like you know, uh, roar it out at some point if it's like, if it has like accumulated like, a soul, if it's like somewhat neutralized if it if it's an attack power. So that's for like when I have to face off again. If, if I ever get into like a Buzzwool versus like Zygarde War <laughs> in terms of like coil setup, so yeah. And uh, the last Pokemon on the team is uh, Gliscor. And this is probably the glue guy. And uh, I have enough speed to outspeed out Rampardos. And maybe just uh, Victini if it's like some weird Trick Room set. And uh, yeah, like it's pretty much a basic Gliscor set, if you ask me. I I I, I dumped a lot of like Spadef on this guy, but I did want to have Impish Nature just to take on some of his hits, like you know from Zygarde and from like a uh, like you know uh, well I guess every other physical attacker like Lulu, Mianchao, I guess Victini, but you know, um, it sounds weird running like. This this score against a potential top of Bulu team, but like, I mean, Toxic is kind of free versus this guy. When like his main poison type is weak to the like, Earthquake, I could just knock off whatever item he has. And also, good thing to note that the berries, fifty percent berries, are like you know weakened this, are like significantly weakened this generation. So that's huge. So yeah. Um, so I guess that's the team. That's all I gotta say for this battle or for this battle preparations and whatnot, so um I'll just get it right into like the replay, so I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, so here we are. We're battling against Guy, aka the Hacks Lord of EPL. Well, here's the game, I guess so. Alright, so we are battling against Sky in uh, BPL uh, Season 4 quarterfinals. And looking at the matchups, uh, it's pretty interesting because he did not bring uh, Blastoise at all, so he has no removal. And it looks like he brought like a more like, you know, U turn, Volturn ish team with, you know, Magic, Victini, and uh, Mianxiao at the core. I am very curious that he brought like uh, Rimpardos and like Regi Eyes as well. So I'm like, 
And I'm wondering what the hell Regiice can do in this game. Because, like, I'm like, why did you bring this over Registeel or, like, uh... Or... Bulu or... Again, again, Bulu is... Bulu's ass and almost every league gets in, so... Um... Like, yeah. Every one of his mons are great except for Bulu, so... I'm just curious about the lack of, like, you know, um... Registeel and Blastoise. But you'll see what his like you know like every team like your opponent has they have it has a purpose or a role so you got to figure out what that role is and try to disrupt it or counter that as best you can and that's what we're here to do so um so quick re recap we have a uh, double edge arrow with no stabs yeah that's questionable but you'll see what happens uh we have a uh, roar uh Suicune with uh, mono attacking uh uh, Skull, CM, and Rest. We have uh, Entei with Howl set up. Woke up Zyga, or not sorry, um, um, Buzzwolf with the uh, Metronome and Lunge. And we have our, you know, Blitzcore guy with, uh, I guess you could say, uh, Knockoff, Toxic, EQ, and Roost. And since there's no Bulu, Blitzcore has a really good matchup, I guess. Well, there's a Reggie Ice there, so he might just run the fuck away. So, yeah. <laughs> so, in terms of leads, I'm thinking whether I should lead with Mew or Whiskor. I did consider Suicune for a bit, but I figured, you know, Minitrick and like will likely be a good lead for him, so um, I'm like thinking to myself, maybe I just lead with like Whiskor. Like, you know, since uh, none of his mons want to deal with me that early on, so unless like he's special, like Vitini and and like uh, well, then against Zygarde, like like I could just knock off or Toxic any of his stuff. So yeah, that's what I do. I'm just gonna lead off with the uh, Whiskor. I see leads off uh, with this uh, Roderick, the uh, Pardos, and something that occurred to me, like I think during this turn was the fact that like the way he led Rampardos and like it kind of clicked to me that it did click to me that wait a minute like since this is his only other rocker this might be like a like you know or this might be like a weird you know I'm gonna get a mon or two type of bonds you know like you know like a suicide lead in a way but I'm like thinking to myself, wait, is he like Life Orb or like, you know, uh, uh, like I looked at my, like, like, like what moves that, you know, Zyga, or not Zyga, but like this uh, Rampardos learns and it has a lot of options like Ice Beam, uh, obviously has Head Smash and Earthquake. So, and it could also have Pursuit as well. So I'm like, holy shit. And I'm like, damn, what could I do? Obviously, I did not want to deal with like a Scarf uh, and Pardos because that'd be a really annoying. And Life Orb is a very concerning option because that automatically Oko's me. And I ultimately decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go for Knockoff. Just to like, like I'm wondering if he just wanted, if wanted to leave Rampardos just because he wanted to get like maybe like, you know, Entei or Mew or like, you know, like Buzzle, like get with a head smash. So I decided to just go for a knockoff, and turns out, well, I do get a crit here, but he has Focus Sash. I'm like, oh, this is a suicide lead, but uh, turns out he has the Ice Beam and he Oko's me. And I'm like, oh shit. Now, I'm not so sure about the investment, but I think that was mate that might have been a roll with the uh, Gliscor. Because I think it was with the, uh, if this was like Brave Nature, like, unless he was Quiet Nature, he Oko's me cleanly. But if he's Brave Nature, then it was a slight chance I could, not slight chance, but I think there was like a, like a 40, 60 chance I, I live or, like, or die. But as you could see, that would have been huge because from there I could have just like roosted off the damage and, well, then again, I'm not so sure because like, uh, well, no, I think I could have lived that. If I lived, maybe I would have, like, taken the, like, the second Ice Beam, like, 
better than that time, so... By the way, it would have been a like, very interesting turn of events, because... I probably would have just gotten up rock, or not rock, but like, maybe like a... Like an under, like an EQ right there, so I could have just went for an EQ, gone for damage. Just got rid of this thing. But alas, we uh, lose a Pokemon, like turn one. So, we got a Mew. And thankfully we do uh, crit this guy, so... Um, I guess we could just go for the... Uh, I think it... I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure what I went for. I think it was either S-Toss or like Spikes. Yeah, I think I go for Spikes here, yeah. As he goes for the S-Toss, or the Head Smash here, and he pretty much does a crap ton of himself. I'm like, yeah, this is definitely lead. Like, uh, Red Pardo, so like max attack, max special attack. So at least I know I could outspeed this thing. For sure. And... And I'm looking to myself seeing if this thing has priority moves and and I don't think it has. So I'm like, alright. Alright. I could just go for S Toss and just try like just to pick him off and just get leftovers recovery. So I do have a spike, which again, I don't know why it doesn't show. For some reason it hasn't been showing throughout this whole like like this whole video series I've been doing, so I'm not so sure why. I do apologize. As you see, like it takes spikes damage from Zygarde, you know. So here comes the second Roderick. And I'm like, alright, so what do I do with, against this guy? I kind of think it's too early to go to like, uh, Buzzwall because he could be like toxic sub and whatnot. And I figured, you know what, I might as well just go Suicune. And see what attack he, like, he uh, goes with. Maybe he like is like choice bandit or maybe he just goes for like a dragon dance or something like that or just goes for damage and i think suicune is probably like my best play because i think he's just gonna try to pick me off so he makes a very fantastic double here and he as he goes to manetric and i go into like suicune and i'm like well shit now i have to take damage on something and i'm looking at his team and I'm like, hmm, like, if I could chip Victini down, I technically don't need Suicune anymore. But, if I could get rid of Manetric, that'd be even better, so... I make a very, like, weird play, and I just decide, you know what, um, I might as well just go for Scald. Because, here's the thing, um, like, I don't know what Regi set that is, but I, Mew should, in theory, beat that thing. Especially if it's like toxic. If it's some weird toxic set, then I have Heal Bell and he just toxics himself, so yeah. And then I have like, uh, you know, like, like the rest of his team is grounded. So if I attempt to like bike up and I like, get rocks up, that'd be huge. So here I decide to like stay in as he goes for the Thunderbolt, does a clean like, like amount of damage. As I do get a good amount as well with Scald. The point where like double edge, uh, it like he's within range of double edge, and that's huge. So now, like I'm like gonna have to sack Suicune here, but which is unfortunate. But like long term, this gets me an Aerodactyl. So and at least um, at least like I could I could get a kill here because at this point he's kind of forced to like let something die, like like. Whether it's uh, Zygarde, or Victini, like Regiice, Mianxiao, like, I don't think he's gonna switch into Victini or Regiice, and then Zygarde is, I think, way too important for him at this point in the game. So I think he's gonna sack his Minetric at this point. Um, here, um, I think I just go for Double Edge. I do get a crit, another crit, but I don't think it mattered, because it was like 54% uh, HP. So, and if he were to, honestly, if he actually were to switch into Zygarde, that would have been huge. Because, like, uh, Zygarde being gone would have, been, would have just opened a massive hole on his, on his team in general, so yeah. And now, like, we got rid of Manetric, so, like, the main, one of the major threats to Arrow is gone. 
but we still don't know what these sets are on this uh, Victini, Zygarde, or uh, Mian Shao, and Reggie Eyes could be like rock polish for all I care, so. Here he goes to Reggie Eyes, and I'm like, okay. Alright, guys. Alright, so. If this thing is Specs, which I doubt it is, I just sack Mew, but if it's not, if it's some weird setup thing option, I'm just gonna go into it just to recover up. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Goes for Blizzard, and thankfully I do have leftovers to recover off damage. I'm gonna go for Roost as he goes for the Hail, and of course this neutralizes my uh, leftovers, but he is also Ice Body, so that's pretty huge. And here he goes for the Aurora Veil, and now this makes a lot of sense. Because now this just puts up major alarm bells on my head and I'm like, oh god. Like this is like another thing I didn't even consider and prep, like Orville on like Reggie Ice. And I'm like, well shit, I just lost uh, I'm thinking to myself, wait, if that's like set up by uh, Zygarde and I kinda just lost. Unless Buzzwool can like buzzle itself into this game. Then again, Mew is already like like at full, so to him he's probably like, well, this is gonna be interesting. And especially when I have spikes plus S toss since it ignores like technically it just ignores like uh yeah like it just ignores like you know uh you know any like like the effects of like aura veil I just do set damage anyway so yeah. He goes into man shout I wish I kind of went for the uh S toss but at this point, I'm like, I'm not worried about Minshaw. Um, I'm not about like, you know, like, doing damage on Minshaw. I'm actually worried about Zygarde. And I need to get a, as much chip as possible, because if that's Light Clay on the Reggie Eyes, then that's going to be huge. That's going to be very difficult for me to do, like, for Z me to do with Zygarde, so. So, at this point, I'm like, I got to stall out these turns somehow. And he actually reveals, like, SD. And I'm like, Holy shit. Um, if he's like Selackberry, I might be done. But, and also if he's like knockoff as well, so that's pretty huge. So. But the thankful, the thankful part is that he has Hail on the field. And if he's like, maybe like Life Ward boosted, maybe Intake and Revenge kill him. And also, um, like, well, he goes for Drain Plunge here. And... He is, well, he isn't like, like he isn't left, like, no, like in Leftovers, Life Orb, or anything. So I don't know what he is, so. Uh, it could be Slackberry for all I care, but then again, it should have activated by now, so. I go for another S Toss, as I am now, I put him in another, in a 2 kill range, so at this point I'm like, yeah, if he has U-turn, he's gonna go for it, or he's gonna go for like knockoff. Obviously, he went for Drain Punch as a prediction. And I'm thinking to myself, what is his last move? Because he needs a flying move to beat Buzzwell, like, you know, acrobatics. And then it kind of clicked on me that, oh, this could be acrobatics or, like, bounce or something like that. I'm like, oh shit, this could be bad. So now I have to realize I have to get rid of this thing really quickly because, like, this thing could have, like, knockoff, U turn, and maybe the last move is, like, a flying move. So, um,. Like, of course, Arrow can, like, kill it, but it'll be up against the Zygarde, so... Here he goes into uh, the U-turn, goes and switches to Bettini, and, man, I lived that. I'm able to live that. Unfortunately, I should have went for Roost, but... Because now I'm pretty much set of fodder, or he's gonna kill me off, because... Of course, Mew is a huge, or... Mew is a huge threat to him, so... He is getting a lot of chip on- I mean, I am giving a lot of chip on this guy, so... Which is pretty huge. Um, unfortunately, um... I don't know, like, this- I make kind of a questionable play. And I don't keep Victini around. Or not Victini, or Mew around. As I just let- I just let- I, I use it as a sack fodder. Because I just did not want to, like, switch Entei in, pretty much. So, yeah. Now, I do have two spikes up, and I could set up rocks, so... And of course, like, uh, we do notice that he has, like, two turns of Aura Veil, so... 
this thing is indeed like clay, so on the Reggie Eyes. However, if I could set up like with Sub Howl on Entei right now, I can just counter set up against him. Of course, I really need to be in that behind a sub, so. And it all comes down to what the Zygarde set is, so. Um, it goes for Thunderbolt, and we don't get paralyzed, and I go for the Howl, and we get our leftovers, so. Here I'm gonna go for E Speed and just get like as much chip as possible, as I know that we can just kill like this uh, Victini with a second of uh, uh, E speed since you know, like Arrow Veil vale just you know, like half damage, so double that, we'll just kill that. So, we get rid of the Victini, and that's huge. And he goes into Zygarde, and now we have to figure obviously, I have to switch to Buzzwool because like Daz and Arrows and shit. So, at this point, I kind of have to just you know, go with Lun like I want to see what Zygarde this is. And like attempt to beat it in some fashion, so um here I have to go to Buzzwool. As he goes for Outrage and it does almost half to me, and I'm like, yeah, this is uh you know the uh, choice band set for Zygarde. I, I do a damage calc and I'm like, yeah, this is choice band like Zygarde. Not so sure if it's Jolly or Um Um like or Adamant, but either way I just know it's like like uh Bandit because it's doing way too much damage and this is like like the puzzles is defensive so he goes for another outrage and I attempt to like kind of roost up here as I kind of like I don't know I kind of make like a weird like like obviously I want to roost up with Bosley but I do have to be concerned that uh I do want to like play around the outrage turns because you know he could be you know confused and of course he gets like, I think he doesn't get confused in this turn, so... Um, so he has another turn of Outrage, so, so he gets confused. You know, in that status. But even then, he has a 1 in 3 chance to like, you know... You know, hurt himself in confusion, so... I wanted to bank off of that. But of course, uh, as you'll see... He gets a crit. And I'm like, well shit. I should've just went for the lunge. Because, I, like, I think lunge... From like like this version of Zygarde would have done like if it's banded, assuming if he doesn't have like like let's say like a little bit of investment, I would have done maybe uh over a quarter to his HP, like say like he's at seventy two, right? So I would have done let's say seventy two minus twenty five is like forty seven. But spikes up, like I could kill him with like double edge. Like forty seven like and then like 47 minus like uh, minus 16 is 31 and with the uh, e-speed plus uh, double edge damage that's pretty huge but unfortunately I don't get that so and now we're in a situation where he can probably kill me with outrage and uh, I'm kind of forced to like then I sack my uh, my aerodactyl to this guy but I think he also has to play around out like the confusion turns as well. So he could stay in and just risk the whole game. Like, you know, I think at this point we've been risking the whole game at this point, but um he could stay in and go for the outrage and kill me with with said move. And for me, my only play at this point is just to like go for double edge or earthquake. I could go for rocks, but I mean this thing is locked into Outrage. I have to kill this thing or attempt to do something, otherwise we just lose. Here he makes a weird decision and he just switches out as I get like another crit onto this. Well, it's kind of a useless crit. And I kill this Mian Shell. And uh, obviously Double Edge would have killed like 50 below 50% Mian Shell with rocks. Or with spikes up, so. Yeah, now he comes into Reggie Ice. And now the battle kind of comes down to what coverage move this thing has. If this thing has like ancient power, then we're kind of done for. But if he has like Thunderbolt for Suicune or Toxic, um, I think his play 100% is just to go for Toxic versus me. Otherwise, I could just attempt to set up with Entei right now. So at this point, um, since he switched out, 
Zygarde, I think it's going to be like around 50, uh, it's like 72, so minus like 16.67 is like 55.33, so I don't know, minus whatever chip he had, so at this point, we have to set up as many like uh, substitutes of, or howl boosts as possible, because I've already acknowledged that like Zygarde's going to be like really annoying to deal with. And uh, especially if he sets up like multiple, how do I say it? Um, if he sets up like an Aura Veil and I can't kill him with, you know, Sacred Fire. And I'm very likely, unlikely I can do it because he has Hail and like Ice Body. So at this point, I'm kind of forced to go for the like Sacred Fire. And unfortunately, I don't kill this thing. However, my other plan at this point is to see what the hell this guy's other coverage option is because he has only revealed Blizzard and obviously Blizzard can't break my sub unless whatever last move he has so um, at this point I'm like you know what? I'm gonna go for sub and try to stall out the turns of you know like um, a veil and at this point I'm like thinking to myself um, okay if he did kill me with Thunderbolt there, so that's huge information to learn, so... Um, unfortunately, the hail turns are really annoying to me. Because... I, I don't know if I could, like, make another sub. Well, I can make another substitute, but I have to hope that he doesn't crit me. So I'm gonna go for another one here, as he goes for, like, Thunderbolt. And also, based off the damage, or based off the damage it did to his, uh... Reggie Eyes, I think he's like defensive. Like, I almost like somewhat near defensive, so obviously I'm taking these Thunderbolts pretty well, and obviously that's the reason why I'm living these like these hits. Unfortunately, um I don't think I'm like I'm gonna be in range to make another substitute. And that's huge, because if I was like at 26%, um I would have just made another sub and this would be three turns. I would have been able to stall him out of like his veil turns and then just go for like E speed on the last turn. Do maybe like 25%. And then from there I could put him in range of like double edge pretty much. And just win me the game. Of course this also depends on how bulky his Zygarde is, so since I've only been doing like spikes damage to him. So yeah. He goes into like the Roderick or the Zygarde. And I do have like multiple like at this point this game comes down to like damage rolls and whether or not like uh he has the coverage moves to hit me with like you know let's say like obviously he has outrage and uh he obviously he could just knock himself into thousand arrows e speed like like outrage and like i don't know what his last move would be but um at this point um I'm out of like, like, unfortunately for me, I can't make another substitute to like, you know, stall him out on one more turn of like, you know, Veil. So I'm going to have to like E-speed him two times. I could Sacred Fire and hope for the burn. But the, here's the thing with that. Then that means I have to hope that my next E-speed gets a high roll for sure. So I'm looking at my damage calcs and I'm like, like the only way I win, I win this is if I get one of like. It, obviously, I'm counting double edge and two e speeds here. If like, one of my if if all my attacks go like with like mid rolls, then I win this game. If I get a high roll with one of my attacks, I also win. So, and that's assuming you know like if he's like you know offensive with no HP investment. So yeah, and that's when we we he decides to go for e speed and I go for my E speed and it does 18% and at this point I'm like okay um that's very weird because obviously he he's banded right so with you know the, the Zygarde versus like the buzz will turn and now I realize wait a minute did I just win and I'm like yeah like as you see, like, E-Speed wouldn't have knocked up me out from that range, and at this point, I'm gonna go for the Roost, just to confirm if he's, like, you know, like, choice banned, 
At this point, I was like, gonna. I actually thought about going for double edge here, but I was doing a, a damage calc to figure out like if he was banded, and I was like, yeah, he is banded. So he goes for a second E speed there, and yeah. At this point, like we just managed to pull out like probably one of the like the hardest game we've had in DPL so far. So man, that was like a very like tense game I had with this guy there. So. GG's to him, and yeah, like that was like a very, very like, I guess, like it's a tense and like rewarding battle, I guess you could say. So, um, um, looking back, obviously I made a couple mistakes. Like the whole Gliscor turn, I think the whole Gliscor versus Rampardos pretty much dictated the rest of the game because if I lived with Gliscor. Like, I would have guaranteed got up, like, any form of chip, like, Earthquake chip on, let's say, Regiice, uh, Rampardos, and I would have also been able to have like, access to, like, uh, Root, like, Roost, and I also have a Sack as well, so. Of course, like, the biggest, like, miss, like, I had a couple misplays here and there, and I think he, like, uh, Sky did as well, but I think my biggest misplay was not going for the, uh, Lunge. Like immediately, like into like the into the uh, you know the what do you gonna call it the uh, Zygarde? I didn't I didn't go for lunge against Zygarde, and honestly that was like probably a big mistake because I would have gone a, at least an extra twenty percent, twenty to twenty five percent, and I would have reduced his attack output to the point where he would have been forced to switch out any ways. And maybe I would have gotten up rocks. But yeah, like... Um, that was pretty huge. And also learning that Regiice was like, you know, physically defensive. Because I think if I if I was like off... I think I, 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 I either kill that thing, or it's very close, so... So yeah, like... Um... I'm not so sure exactly what else to say, like... I know that this, like, battle, like... Was very like it was like a very difficult like one to like how uh, manage especially like um with like the whole like like bandit like you banded Zygarde and Veil turns like that, that was really annoying like I'll admit the whole like Rampardos and like uh Reggie Ice they caught me off guard pretty much they caught me off guard and, and that's something I have to like learn like, like like I have to like look into like the move sets of those Pokemon more carefully and just not zone in on like let's say like a uh, Lulu and Blastoise the whole time. But yeah, like as you as I mentioned, like spikes were pretty huge for the rest of this game. If I managed to get up like an extra area of spikes, I think I won, but like much more easily. But I don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot more chances for RNG in that situation. So yeah. Um. So. GG's to uh, Sky, and uh, yeah, our next opponent I'll be uh, detailing or talking about, or we're facing off, is uh, is Kron, or, or I guess, yeah, that's it, uh, yeah, that's, that's Kron, yeah, Kron, so, man, I think I battled him in like semis in this one Nutter League in PPL, and now I'm battling him in like another semis, so, let's see how that goes. So, anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.